In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Siamé, a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Wednesday, the 10th of May, 2023, fifth week of Easter, and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Sister Jacqueline Rita Timanoi from Kitale in Kenya, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Godfrida Mugala from Kasama, Zambia, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Alex Murage, celebrating his birthday today, from Nyeri Archdiocese in Kenya. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants towards yourself, that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, they were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Acts 15 verses 1 to 6. In those days, some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brethren. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, reporting the conversion of the Gentiles, and they gave great joy to all the brethren. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to charge them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Psalm 122. This is 1 to 2, 3 to 4, A, B, 4, C, D. Response is taken from Psalm 122, verse 1. And the response is, Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem is built as a city bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. For Israel's witness it is to praise the name of the Lord. There were set the thrones for judgment the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia! Abide in me and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Alleluia! 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does not bear uh, fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The early years of Christianity were marked with criticism. In fact, I wouldn't want to be in a position that Paul and Barnabas found themselves. That was very difficult because we had those people, the veterans, those people who thought they had Judaism in their hands, and so all the others were not good enough. It happens even in our churches where we have veterans, you know, where we have those people who think that they have been there too long not to be opposed by anybody. The Jews felt like those who were coming into the church of Christ had to be like any other Jew. They had to follow the customs that had nothing to do with religion. They had nothing to do with faith. What does circumcision to do with my relationship with God? Making God so naive. Listen, God is not related to me because of my physical appearance, because of my physical being. I am related to him by virtue of my spiritual reality. That is exactly what connects me to God. I am very naive when I start thinking that I will be pleasing to God when I circumcise myself. I am very naive when I start thinking that God will be happy with me if I am white, if I am black, if I am pink, if I am yellow. God is not interested in all that. Nothing physical really affects my relationship with God. And Paul was aware of this. Paul had gone on another level in his spirituality, but he didn't have many friends. Those Judaizers came and said, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And Paul, who understood the truth, tried to argue with them, but he did not lose his peace with Barnabas. Both of them, Paul and Barnabas, handled this with maturity. You know, sometimes we are faced with criticism, and all we want to do is either to give up or to show that we have power over anything and everything that is happening. But you know, you don't have to do that. Paul and Barnabas did not show their power. 
they got up and went back to Jerusalem to discuss the matter. They handled it with maturity. They did not start shouting or start insulting. No, they did not try to prove the knowledge they had. No, they sought the help of the community. Don't handle things on your own. Don't try to show that you have more knowledge than others when you are challenged. No. Seek the community's intervention. If you have issues in your marriage and you are quarreling over something, don't try to prove to your partner that you are intelligent. No. Sometimes you may be wrong. You may be wrong over something. That is why it is good to consult. That is why when dissensions arise, it is good to seek the help of the family, the help of a priest, the help of the elders. Otherwise, dissensions will never end. That will only happen when you are deeply rooted in Christ. When you realize that you are a branch, and as a branch, you cannot do anything without the tree, and the tree is Christ. That's why he says, I am the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And when you face criticism, When you face a lot of opposition, that is the pruning you are experiencing in your life. And if you want to bear more fruit, be ready for the opposition. Be ready for criticism. I want to tell you, I've reached where I have reached because I've been open to criticism. I've been open to challenges, and I know you can reach somewhere when you are ready to accept that you can go wrong. And the Lord prunes us through that process so that we may bear more fruit in our lives. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Wednesday to you. Thanks be to God.